we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. I'm Stephen Jack Buzella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is the Land Academy Show. We're talking about how long it takes to make a million bucks with land versus the stock market. Here's why. The Dow hit 40,000 today. This is uh, when Jill and I were recording, and it's, I guess, May 16th. Mm -hmm. That just shocks me. Right. Everybody's it, celebrating. What's the what's limit up and limit down? I can't even remember. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there's daily limits. Well, I know, but they're then yeah. That's well. Then they stop it. Like they're gonna, it can't go so high. Like, did they even bring that up today? Like we're pushing it no, or anything? Okay, I didn't because even it know. wasn't wasn't it wasn't a huge jump from uh, the previous day. Astronomical. So, but my it. philosophical question to you, Jill, is, you know, there's a lot of celebration today, but when in real estate do you celebrate when things are at the top of the market? Do you celebrate and jump around and, and when you're are you happy when the land is selling for the most it's ever sold for ever? Not really, no. How about houses? You Do know, you love to go into a market and see people just you know, hitting the top of the market with their remodel? Nope. No, so this is I, I see where you're going with this and I understand your point. Okay, so everybody's high fiving each other because it's the most expensive way it's ever been. Yay! Well, it's only good for one person who sold that stock at that time everybody else has gone oh i blew it kind of thing that's it so so you're talking about our world and what really makes sense to us and what you can do consistently which is a lot of you know getting to second base i guess you know first base second base i'm happy with that all day long to me you know what to me i like getting to second base too <laughs> <laughs> I know you also like a home run, but we won't go there. So a home run, home runs happen once or twice a year for us. Let's just say that. But what happens more, more often than not, second and third base, which is doubling my money and then a little bit more than doubling my money. There's times that I go that there's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I bought this for 20,000 sold it for 120. That's a home run. First base is I bought it for 20, sold it for 35. 30, 35, it didn't go that great, but who can complain about making 10 or 15 grand? This is all very consistent. And then second base to me is I bought it for 20 and I sold it for 40, 45. This is great. You know, third base is I sold it for, you know, 60 to 70 and then you know what home run is. So, and I, I'm really, I'm more happy with that. I don't, I'm not, I think these, you never want to be the most expensive house on the block. I've always believed that. Um, here's some you things don't want to reset the market. Here's some stuff we're going to talk about today in a big picture. We're going to talk about the stock market versus land investing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to dabble a little bit in comparing those two also with owning a different business, like a convenience store or a manufacturing facility. Uh, they're, they're all not apples to apples. There's a different amount of energy that you can put in. There's a huge amount, and this is super important for Joe and I, control that you have over uh, what you're trying to accomplish financially. Go ahead. So, I mean, here's a little prelude to that, and then we're gonna take a couple of questions. You know, when you, when you go out, buy a piece of, a share of stock or, or a block of stock, you're paying retail for it. You're paying retail for whatever it's worth that day. When you buy a piece of real estate, you're paying, if you do it our way, 20 or 30% of what it's worth that day. I would like to point out one thing before we get into the big topic, which is I want you to pay attention as we're talking today about startup costs. I love that. Thank that, you. That's an integral part of uh, actually what, when we get into the real in depth in this. Uh, but and we will answer the question. Mm -hmm. You know, how long does it take to make a million bucks in land versus the stock market? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of variables, but I'll tell you, uh, given the percentages never change in these things, mm -hmm. what changes is your activity mm -hmm. and your personality type. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, it's ten to thirty times longer to make it in the stock market versus land. That's true. And we'll translate, and I'll give you all the numbers. Cool. 
Each week on the show, we answer a question uh, from the Land Academy member Discord forum, and we take a deep dive into land-related topics by popular request from our Land Academy community. Today, we have two questions. Go ahead, Jill. Okay, so the first question today is from Jamay. Jamay's a sweetheart. Yeah. So yeah, I've been, been, been with the Land Gals for quite some time now. So she wrote, good morning, guys. Quick question. How long is too long to troll for new markets? Over one hour, over two hours. I'm finalizing my weekly schedule. Good. Awesome video that Jack and Jill dropped yesterday has me looking more into scheduling my time more efficiently and to have an actual schedule. So I'm thinking to start one hour to troll, two hours for the red, yellow, green test, uh, test for reason. Uh, not sure how long to spend on that and so on. So how do you guys schedule your time? Thanks. So Jill and I are very, very, very fortunate that I do the front 30%, maybe maybe 40% of the work, which is what you're asking about here. And then I'm fortunate because she takes over. When some mail goes out, she takes over. She just counts on me to find good places to send mail, uh, spend the right time um, analyzing whether or not they're actually real, uh, good places from a data perspective, and then getting a mailer out if that's priced correctly. Oh, I hate to answer questions like this, but it really depends on you. I spend a tremendous amount of time trolling. It's actually like crossed over into a hobby of mine. And so it's an unhealthy, Jamey. Yeah. It's an unhealthy amount. <laughs> Let's just I can say, tell you what, I can what are you doing over there? Nothing. Look at the real estate. Yeah. I can tell you what, <laughs> what houses. Here's an example. Here's a great example. I mean, I can tell you what houses in Juneau, Alaska are worth. Just, yeah. I just can't. We were we sat down um, during the college basketball tryouts at a little uh, neighborhood bar, and s these two people sat down next to us, and we started talking to them. They're in town, uh, from way out of town, in town for watching uh, college basketball. It was a Final Four. Yeah. Tryouts. I'm sorry. Just sorry. so they started. We just got to talking. They're real interesting people, and and. You know, this guy renovated old buildings and condos, True. and he was kind of, I guess, sort of retired, but not really. They had a place in Florida. We had a lot to talk about and a lot in common, and they talked, they were from Michigan, so am I. And they described where they're from, and I said, oh, you mean Sturgis, Michigan? And they both just like, what the heck are you talking about? That's a direct result of my unhealthy um, <sighs> trolling all over the market and looking at all these little areas and trying to find the best places to send mail. And when we do, we, we send mail there. So... One hour to troll for a normal person, I think that's a little bit light. I, I think I would spend, two, I, don't, I don't want to put a time limit on it because when you're done trolling, you're, you're, the data's well, going to tell you. Can I ask I'm a different question? I'm done trolling, yeah. Okay, let's say, let me ask it this way then. How many zip codes or how many, how many zip codes or counties should I have identified to sit down and run a good red, yellow, green test? I would look at no less than five uh, separate, separate markets. There we go. So like, uh, if, if you like Wisconsin for whatever reason, and there's three markets there, and they're very different markets, maybe one's outside of, uh, geez, you know, Milwaukee, one's in way north, close to Canada, and on and on. Those are three separate markets. But I would I would look at no less than five. Maybe they have five to 10 zip, co zip codes in each. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna argue that that's a day. Have you spent a day on that? You know, that's what everybody's answer was in here. Yeah, I'd spend a day on it. And I was, I was going to try to avoid Sunday. that. But the truth is, I really think that it's going to take you a day. Yeah, this might be your Sunday. Today's trolling Sunday. That's fine. And then the next time you go do it, it's gonna, Tuesday. it'll take less less time. And the next time less. And the next time less. And I include uh, the red, green, yellow test in that. That's good. A whole day. Oh, okay. And so that's a separate day or the same day? Same day. Okay. All right. So there's your answer. So plan on blocking out you know, a whole day at least to troll and test for reason. Troll, troll and the red, yellow, green test. Yeah. Not the test for reason part, that's separate. But troll, and okay, got it. And then test for reason, which is, this is after you run the numbers, you, you download, scrub the data, you priced it, you pulled Pull down some comps. So, and I'm I'm guessing right now that the way Jamae is asking this is she's using concierge in the middle there. I hope so. Um, or her kid, <laughs> her Dana Nutty kid, who she said do this. You know, I don't know, but probably I'm guessing concierge in the middle there because then they would take the zip codes that Jamae gave them, download the data, scrub the data, pull the comps. Okay. took out the uh, outliers, gave her a graph, gave her the comps that they pulled, gave her the numbers she came up with, and then came back with, here's what 20% looks like. Now, 
is time to test for reason. And that's where she's at here. So, and then what are you thinking about? I can't that? get past second base. Okay. <laughs> you know, can there's, day, you, there's days you? You, I don't let you get past <laughs> second base. That's true. <laughs> can I tell you about second base? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sidetracked. <laughs> Second base is just a stop off for most, uh, for young men. I don't know how it works for girls. I, I uh -oh. don't want to know, actually. For young men, at second base is just a stop off on the way to, you know, hitting a triple or whatever ends up happening. But you get older. And I just think you got to take the bases slowly. <laughs> Enjoy the bases. Enjoy the bases. <laughs> That's hilarious. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't even know how to answer that. And there might be kids in the back seat. They don't know. They're, we're talking That's about baseball. True. There are little kids. It's baseball, baseball season. Baseball. That's true. It is baseball season. You got you right. All right. So you've got a day's worth of of trolling and red, green, yellow tests. You've used you concierge. Down, you've used concierge. That's going to be you can allocate depending on how busy they are. Uh, offers to owners.com how busy they're they are it might take two days to turn it around two working days maybe it's one if it's real light there's another day you're going to get that back and you're going to have probably a lot to say about it mm -hmm. they're going to get they'll they will input probably 20 percent for you i just went through this with uh it's with arbitrary one of our, number one of our children i just went through this because he's smashing it he's, he's sending out all kinds of mail he's a new rekindled interest i hope and i hope he keeps up with it and we, we went in and adjusted pricing all over the place. Some of it was 20%. We were down, uh, in some cases, for large properties that were really rural, we were down as low as uh, 3%. Wow. And it doesn't, that doesn't reflect, let me take a second and explain this. 3%, we're not mailing out price property. We're not sending mail out at 3% of the retail price of properties. There's all kinds of other uh, things to consider. If you're, if you solve for a retail price per acre or a uh, concierge did and it's $10,000 an acre, that, that's not going to apply to a 150 acre property. Mm -hmm. That's way in the north end of the zip code. Uh, you just have to test that for a reason. You have to look it up as if the things came back signed, the purchase came back agreement signed. And we did this many, many, many times. And he said, oh, my God, you know, yeah. this is $180,000 for a $25,000 piece of property. He's coming up with that stuff, not me. And that's what, what you know, you know how to price when you're having these independent thoughts, regardless of who, who, who you're sharing this with. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's why it's called test for reason. That's going to take you a whole day. Perfect. The longer, the better. That's it. And there you go. And I would say, Jamee, the last little piece I would add to this question before we move to the next one is um, give yourself, do enough of this that you're covered for a couple weeks. Like I would do this once a month because you can't do this every week. If you spend all this much time every week, you're not going to have time to do your due diligence, close deals, all that good stuff. Find a broker to sell these deals. So if you're doing this every other week or most preferably once a month, you're doing this. So now you have your next four weeks of mail done. That's going to be, I think, that makes the most sense. So, you, you know, the, the, the calendar that or the schedule that you come up with this week might change, will change next week and then on and on and then stuff's going to happen maybe you have a funeral to go to unfortunately then all it's all the calendar is just not that's it mm -hmm. it's not finished ever exactly i'm going to read this one because it's for you oh, okay evan says i just wanted to share a quick reminder that the right agent real estate agent changes everything i bought a commercial property back in march of 23 for fifty three thousand bucks I hired a local, uh, he means real estate agent, that I thought was a good fit. She put together a good listing, appeared to promote the property, and communicated well. After listing it for a year, she never brought one offer. I gave the listing to Mossy, a Mossy Oak a agent. Mossy Oak is a land na nationwide land brokerage that we use often. That did a great job selling uh, a residential parcel for me. He listed the property for 150,000 bucks, same as when uh, the listing expired with the first agent, and brought me a $135,000 cash offer in three weeks. We closed 30 days later. Lessons learned, colon. Really spend time researching and uh, interviewing your agents and no 12-month agreements. Yep. I never do a 12 month agreement because here's why I go into it. Here's my conversation when I'm looking for a, a, an agent to sell a property for me. What price do you think you could sell this for in, let's just say 90 days. There's no fire. I don't need it gone next week. 
and I'm not trying to reset the market here. I'm not looking for top dollar. I'm going to sit on it for a year and a half. They're like, okay, 90 days. I think we could sell it for X. Great. You know, and we all connect, we move forward. So when we do the listing agreement, it comes back. I go, uh, nope, six months, I cross that off right in six months. And if they ask, well, what I usually do 12 months. Well, you know what? We all agreed we're going to sell it in 90 days. So we're going to do six months. And if we need to, something weird happens, we will totally look at it, you know, revisit this again at the end of six months. And I've never had anybody say no. That's the answer. Because if you don't have a good one, then at least you can get out of it after six months. You were stuck for a year. That makes me, that that's painful, you know? And it's that's $53,000 is, you know, nothing to sneeze at that's not in your account that you could be using for other things right now, so. I have to tell you. Glad you brought that up, Evan. Me too, the, between the t- our responsibilities and what we do here, mm-hmm. I feel like I have mine licked. Like, I think, Doing a mailer hasn't changed that much. The data we use has changed and the methodology for trolling changes, but the basic stuff, like if the you concept. said, please go do a 150,000 unit mailer, I would come back probably in Couple two days. working days with a pretty real good solid, let's send it out. The stuff that changes on Jill's side is changes all the time. So, and it's, I don't, and it doesn't seem to uh, disrupt you doesn't seem to even really you don't even have a thought about it you just adjust that for it and move forward no i think it's nature i'm or i've i don't know or is it nurture i don't know i've learned especially with you to roll with the punches <laughs> <laughs> isn't that bad Jill? is it it's <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say that. No, no, not at all. It's not that bad. Finding the right real estate agent. You know, you might, we've had great real estate agents and then they just go dark. They do, we do a couple of deals with them. They get a girlfriend and it's over. Or. Oh yeah. Cause we, well, these are all real stories. <laughs> That's true. Uh, or they change brokerages or they move to a different state or all kinds of stuff happens. And then you got to start the process over of looking at who's got great listings you know, I, it's very inconsistent finding right. a great land broker. Or maybe, you know, we have a lot of land brokers that are in our group as and they're buying and selling their own land. That's and they're brilliant. real distracted. They're just, and rightfully so, they're distracted with doing their own deals or raising capital to, um, mm-hmm. you know, or, or whatever, as they should be. Right. So stuff changes. How Jill answers the phone changes all the time based on how, where we're sending mail and, and who's calling back and how savvy whether they or not, are, or whether what's or going not the, on. Their tax bill, uh, property tax bills just came out. Yeah, time on of year. On and on and on. Just, it's Thank you. Very, a lot of variables. Thanks. Today's topic how long does it take to make a million dollars in land versus the stock market? So let's just think about this for a second uh, philosophically you've got 30 or 60 thousand bucks to spend and we'll get to that in a second because you don't need 30 or 60 thousand dollars to spend on in real estate because we'll fund you but let's just assume uh, we'll try to be as apples to apples as possible that you got sixty thousand dollars to spend and you dump it into the stock market I wish you all could see this. Uh, this is cool. Hear. Oh, can they? Sure. Oh, you don't mind doing that? No, not oh. at all. They see it. Give a second. We're yep. gonna we're gonna add screen share here. Ah. Oh. So you've got sixty thousand dollars to spend. The S and P. There's three stock markets: the Standard and Poor's, the uh, New York Stock Exchange, and the Nasdaq, which is an acronym for something. They all have indexes to indicate how well they're doing without looking at the entire exchange. The S&P has the S&P 500, the New York Exchange has Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the NASDAQ, I think they have the NASDAQ 500. I'm, I'm not exactly National sure. National Association stock, you're just, I don't know. You're just guessing. I totally am, I bet I'm right. <laughs> Historically, uh, if you put, this is a 10 years trailing because all the statistics came out because, again, the Dow hit 40,000 today. If you put a dollar uh, in the S&P 10 years ago, it would be worth 13% more. In my in our case here, we put $60,000 in. It's worth $60,007,000 10 years later. Hmm. The Dow Jones uh, much better performance went up 131%. Um, so $60,000 would yield 138000 Interesting. The NASDAQ, 260% because of the tech stocks and the tech presence there hmm. uh, would yield $200,000. So 
putting, uh, you know, tripling your money in 10 years is amazing by anybody's standards. Mm -hmm. That's not what happens every 10 years. And I will tell you that if you look at it year over year, there were years where I lost money and then made up for it and then lost again and made up for it. When's the last time you had a losing well, year? In, in, isn't that uh, what this is right here? Yeah, this showing that's the this Dow. Mountain. Okay, got it. But just giving you, giving you, a, it's a screenshot of what happens year over year. Well, I'm mindful of the fact that not everybody can see this. Most people are listening to it, not seeing it. Well, hopefully they're on YouTube right now going, or they paused and they went over to YouTube so they can see it. <laughs> You're good. With land, it's tied to inflation. So you would pay retail price for a piece of land, and it's uh, you do it the Land Academy way. You don't you don't buy a piece of junk, but you pay 100% of what it's worth the day you buy it, which we never do. It's tied to inflation, and inflation went up over the last 10 years, if you combine it all, about 25%. So $60,000 would yield $75,000. Wait, back that up again a minute. I'm so... You're saying retail is sixty thousand dollars for the property. Yeah, so I I go I don't do it the Land Academy way. I go out on the MLS. I oh. choose a piece of property. I buy it for sixty thousand dollars, and uh, oh. and I let inflation do its thing. This is what not to do. This is not. You should never. Oh, okay, do this. got you, it. I'm like, you should where never are you going do any this? of these four things. This is true. <laughs> now I understand where we're going here because I'm like, why would I buy something for sixty and hang on to it for ten years and for seventy five? I'm not doing that. So. Here's what's great about putting money into the stock market. If, uh, depending on how you look at it, you okay. have to do nothing, especially if you put it into an index like this, like the Dow Jones or the NASDAQ or the S&P 500. Okay. You put the $60,000 in, you turn the computer off, uh, 10 years later, you turn the computer back on and you see what it's worth. Hmm. Does anybody do that? Hell no. Mm -hmm. Does anybody put $200 on, a, on the roulette wheel and then come back 10 years later and see what it's worth? Yeah, it's worth zero. Yeah. So with land, no, you get up every morning and you do some stuff. Yeah. Not a lot, but you do some stuff. So here's the deal. Those are the basic numbers. wasn't prepared for this. Thank you for doing that, though. Yeah. Hopefully my guys will edit this out. If not, we probably just lost you. No, they're fine. <laughs> You're good. There's a lot of variables. Here's the most important variables, in my opinion. The first one is time. So you are doing nothing in these stock, in, uh, stock investments annually. If it were a regular year over year annual, annual return, you'd get about 1% on the S&P, 10% on the, on the New York, and NASDAQ would generate 20% return a year. Again, some years you lose money, some years you make a lot of money. Recently, these last two years have been huge earners for all three. So they're skewing the hell out of these numbers. What I prefer is control over my money, control over my time, I want control over everything except Jill. That's that's about it. We want the same thing. <laughs> if you buy a piece of property and you sell it for twice what it's worth, buy for 60, sell for 120, uh, buy for 30, sell for 60, you just you make twice as much money, which is our if I look back at 16,000 transactions that Jill and I've done, I see what we bought it for and I see what we sold it for and it's like 52%. Mm -hmm. we, we've doubled our money on, if you look at all the average deals. Mm -hmm. Buy for 30, sell for 60 and you buy one piece of property every year. One piece of land mm -hmm. every year and you make $30,000 on it, you will have had at, at the end of the 10 years, turn that $30,000 into 330000 that's 1100% return. Now we're it's now, just one a year. One deal a, a year. year. So now we're talking about comparing mm -hmm. the NAS, the uh, Dow Jones at 130% return over these 10 years versus an 1100% return. Mm -hmm. I would argue that doing one deal a, a year would take oh, an hour you could a work, month. You could work, uh, I mean, you could just do the deal in January and then never work again. Yeah. So that's not taking into consideration, well, I got to have a mortgage. Yeah, don't, I'm not saying drop your life. I'm, just, I'm saying you have a little land business on the side, mm -hmm. go to college, go, uh, continue to be a real estate agent, uh, raise your children, 
you know, uh, do what you're gonna do, just do a deal a year. Get into the land business, learn how to do this. Buy That's one so freaking piece of land a year, 1100% return if you double your money. You could buy for 20 and sell for 40, buy for 30, sell for 60, buy for 50, sell for 100. All of those work. Mm -hmm. This is a lot harder to do, full disclosure. If you're, you'll see in a second, if you're buying for 100 and selling for 200, that's tougher. Mm -hmm. It's totally possible. Jill and I do it all the time. But if you're new at this, it's just that's a harder, there's a lot less people to sell a property to for 200,000 bucks than 80,000, let's say. So, Moving on to what really happens. These are all screenshots now. Jill's yelling at me to go back to the camera. Go ahead, Jill, say what you need to say now that the camera's on. I was, I was just <laughs> thinking how you were looking at the camera and making your point, but nobody could see it. Yeah. You're good. Huh. I think they got the gist of it now. No, it gets better. Oh, it gets better? You want to show this again? Okay, cool. They got the gist of it now means Jill's bored. No, we, it's okay. We burned it. Burned no, through her, her attention span. You're good. What really happens and what we teach is you take that same thirty to $1,000 that you're, and you turn it into 60000 It might take you that January. It might take you uh, January through the first quarter. You take that $60,000 and you turn it into two or three deals, or you use our money to do it. So what you often hear us talk about is do a deal a month, do a deal every uh, three months, or as fast as you can, or your time allows, to buy and sell land pretty consistently and double your money is as, as successful as you will be. Uh, be. It, so I'm gonna, now I'm gonna answer the question, how long does it take to make a million bucks? It takes about three years, probably less. I did a whole talk on 24 month millionaire and how to accomplish that. It's very, very realistic if you work at this and understand it versus 30 years in the stock market based on the performance of the last 10 years. That's a point, I get that. So I talked about this a little bit. I brought notes. <laughs> Well, I'd love to. So I, yeah, I'd love to. Hear are, are you finished? Point. Yeah, okay. totally. So this is what I talked about last week in in our land gals. We meet the first um, or two weeks ago. Anyway, we meet the first Tuesday of every month. We get together for a couple hours, and my whole presentation was the most important things you've got to be doing right now today to be successful. And it was really go at this like a crazy person. I talked about this recently on a podcast too, but I gave him some math. I'm like, why would I do it? Why would I push so hard? What's so, why would I, you know, whatever. I'm like, hold on everybody. Let's just do some, this is Jill math. I love your beautiful spreadsheet. I just have one equation here and I'll, I'll hold it up. <laughs> so mine, mine is, look, if you spend, it's great because we're both thinking on $30,000. Okay. And here's why. Making $30,000 per deal is so flippin' easy, it's not even funny. Yep. It is a great, it's a great sweet spot. You're selling things for sub $100,000. You know, you bought it for sub $50,000, right? You bought it somewhere below 50, you're selling below 100. Your only goal is to make 30,000. And I want you to make 30,000 after commission, after, you know, your mail cost and that and your data and your whatever it is. So, that it's this is not nuts. And if you just try to do my goal was a little was a little um because I was really trying to push people. My goal was a little more than one a month. Mine was three a month because I was speaking to a group that they either are or aspire to be full time at this. Like we're not messing around. And my my thing, here's your carrot. If you come at this like a crazy person, like this is all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say no to everybody. I'm not gonna take these trips. I'm not gonna do this stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna put my head down. I'm like, big deal. You spend two years of your life, you put your head down and you go like a crazy person. You try for three a month or three, excuse me, try for four a month. You try to do one a week, you know, but you're like, I did three a week. What, what would that look like, Jill? So three deals a week for 24 months, you know, and you're all, and you're making $30,000 a deal, period. You know what that is? That's $2.16 million. 
like, okay, wait a minute, say that again. This is how it went on the call, went on our, our thing. Two years, so 24 months, three deals a month, making $30,000 a deal is $2.16 million. Come on. Okay, Jill, I can't do that. What if you do half so of that? That's my point. Okay, you screw it all up. I did a deal, I averaged yeah. a deal and a half a month. Okay, I went at it like a nut, nut case. And I did a deal a half a month and I did all the stuff said no and family was on board. They all understood. So what did I make? Over a million bucks. So it's a million five hundred, one million five hundred thousand, whatever. Yeah. So um, not even that. But anyway, you make a million bucks. So what? I mean, that's the whole for me. That's the whole point here. And my my other point I want to make today uh, that's really important since we're talking big picture and comparing mm-hmm. what we do to right now just stock market. So, but there's I can't think of any other uh, avenue in real estate. We all we're all passers money to be made in real estate, right? We all know that check. But so many people are still coming at this like. I need, to, I need to take out loans. I've got to get someone to back me because I want to do a flip. Well, these homes are getting more and more. Now, let's, I'm just comparing it to, you know, doing a $30,000. Say you want to clear $30,000 on a house flip. For a lot of people, that's just fine, especially if they're doing a house flip a month. They're happy with those numbers. You can't get started with the same cash we need. You need a couple hundred thousand dollars oh, to come out. Oh, way more than that. You probably need three hundred thousand oh, dollars. No, minimum three to five. Okay, yeah. three to five five hundred thousand dollars to come at this to try to make thirty thousand, maybe fifty thousand a deal on a house flip. You can't, and most people that 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 knocks them out of real estate right there. And I feel bad. You know, there's some smart people out there. Not, not to mention, I'm not even comparing the time and the energy and the cost. Remember, while I'm doing my, let's say I'm, I'm, I did this, cut this in half. I'm doing my one and a half deals a month. You know, to make a million dollars in two years. Well, shucks, I can do it that from anywhere. I don't. I'm not tied to this project. I don't care what you know. Storm rolled through town and and uh, ruined the roof with hail damage or whatever it is. Fill in the blank. It's land. We're not philosophically talking to you about what's possible here. We're telling you what happens to us every single year. Every year, Jill and I make about, uh, these are gross numbers, you know, without expenses and stuff. This is the difference between the prices that we pay for real estate and then the, the what we sell it for. Uh, between two and a half and three million dollars. It's If you average everything out for their most recent years, it's about two and a half million dollars. And so if you divide two and a half million dollars, we try to make, uh, you know, we try to make a hundred grand. We don't always, but we try to. That's 25 deals. That's not, that's that's a couple of deals that's a month. That's not the way that's, of going. That's, that's two, not all the way of going on, but that's a good thing. That's yeah. two. I, so that's how, that's what we do. Yeah. And, and every single thing, we, we're not holding anything back from you. We're not doing something special that, oh, well, let's not tell them about that. Nothing like that happens. We tell you exactly what we do. We send out a ton of mail. We do our, my, our I do my homework with pricing and trolling and all of that. And Jill smashes it on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking, this is a huge issue with the perception of um, saturation out there in competition. I don't know why this industry is, uh, seems to be in the last couple of, well, it's, I'm sure it's because other groups that are popping up are say, saying that they're having trouble, having trouble with uh, saturation. Well, I asked Jill several times, are you concerned about saturation? And she said, no, over and over and over again, and neither am I. It's like saying I'm set worried about too many houses. So I think in the back of a lot of people's heads, they just say, well, I don't have, I'm, they're trying to get out of it. Right. You know, what's, I heard a sentence the other day, a couple of days ago, because I'm taking a different course on a, com, on a completely unrelated scenario. And, and she said, I mean, are you more comfortable doing something or nothing? Because she's very more comfortable doing something. That's very sweet. And so if it's easier for mm-hmm. you to do nothing, then this is not the podcast for you. It isn't. But you know what? You do put your head down for two years. You can do nothing. You can put 30,000 bucks into the stock market and do nothing. True. And get a return. True. I'm happy. I'm more happy doing something. <laughs> I am too. What are, what are you most happy doing? <laughs> Let's have it's a, a sidebar conversation. I'm a, I'm dis- I do like to diversify my activity. <laughs> are we back to second base? Yeah, I love second base. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's really good. <great. laughs> what do you? I like being on a motorcycle these days. I That's love good. that actually. Jill and I are about to embark on a three month, maybe four month RV trip. I'm planning I'm very for five. excited for that. Are you really? Because you know what? I did the math. We're I I think potentially we could be gone for five months is what I was kind of looking at. And Are I'm great excited? with that. Oh my gosh, yes. So am I. Oh yeah. It's that's so leaving funny. in like three days. Mm. We'll do the show from the road. You'll see. Oh it'll be fun. Yeah, okay. next week this well we've got a bunch of interviews coming up, but there's a, it'll you'll be see good. It you'll see us. Oh, uh-huh. it'd be great. Julie, you have something uh, inspirational to share with us. Yeah. You know what I want to talk about? Like it kind of ties into what you just said about are you more happy doing something or doing nothing? I'm more happy always doing something, obviously. I can't sit still. Um, and it's, and I'm, uh, um, what was I going to say? So for me, it ties into what I do in my free time, which is I'm always learning something. And I want to remind everyone the value of continued education. And it's funny because there's a, recently this is a very sweet couple that, uh, that, um, have been in part of Land Academy not that long, and they're like, "Oh, we got this," and and they kind of stopped showing up. They kind of stopped being involved. And I'm like, and and I'm and and then I'm I'm hearing little snippets of their struggling, and I'm like, you know what? Because they're not staying involved. Like, there's always things that come up, even within our group. You know, whether you like for me, I personally pick up and read all kinds of books on all kinds of topics, but it all ties to building a business or being an entrepreneur or being better at something that we do you know even though i'm really you know i love sales that's been my whole life right am i gonna i will still pick up sales books i will still go to sales things i i I might pick up a little nugget i don't know look at doing things a little bit differently I'm, i'm never gonna stop i'm always gonna stop learning or stop i'm always gonna stop Yeah, I'm always going to keep learning. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm getting tripped on my own words here. But so I just want to remind everybody, like even in Land Academy, this was a discussion recently. You know, even though you come into Land Academy, you watched it your first year, went off and did some mail, go back and rewatch it six months later, watch it a year later. As we, not even just our updated versions, but the same version that we have, because as someone very nicely said on our member call, you're a different person now that you're watching it. What you knew when you first watched this one year ago and you're watching now, you are so different and what you know and what you're gonna pick up on is gonna be different because of that too. So I'm just kind of reminding everyone, don't, don't, don't let off the gas, don't get too comfortable um, and, and keep pushing and, and you'll get better and more efficient and it's just all gonna get better. You know, here's my inspiration, and it was, uh, I kind of bled into it on the regular topic, but continuing education is imperative, and I I am much more comfortable doing something versus nothing. I uh, used to race motorcycles, super bikes back in the day, you know, drag your knee on the ground, but I'm much more into the dirt thing now. And so I'm going back into continuing education, like Jill is saying, just watching videos and taking classes and everything, and, and it occurred to me, and I didn't even realize that I was doing this, but... One of the courses that I'm taking said that if you get on your bike, it looks like there's nothing going on when you watch somebody ride a motorcycle. But for me, what's happening, especially in the dirt, is every single turn that I'm taking, I, the next one, I try to make it better somehow. I try to lose, uh, choose my line better, uh, implement the leaning techniques and all that stuff. So there's a lot of mental things that are going on that I don't think uh, are apparent when you watch somebody else do it. And so that's continuing education. And I've been doing that since I started riding, just trying to become a better rider, trying to, trying to improve track time or, or dirt time, uh, or get out there more and all of that, you know, you learn all about yourself and what you're capable of and where your limits are. And this is no different. You know, this, I ask myself, I've been watching uh, CNBC for hours now because of this 40 thought, because I'm just fascinated mm. that, uh, at the reactions of people and this 40,000 um, point milestone. Was Have we ever hit this before? Never. Oh. It was the first time ever. That's it. Ever. And I don't think it's something to celebrate about. What do they, th- the what price do they tie earnings. it to? They, well, that, so they spend a lot of time talking to that. And price to earnings ratios have never been higher also. So price to earnings means the price of the stock divided by the actual earnings for the same period. 
or the period. Meaning the profit the person made? The profit? The profit that the company's making. So Microsoft has a PE ratio and the price of the stock should be within a, a reasonable gap within an acceptable earnings place. So you can't just have, theoretically can't just have an amazingly high stock price with absolutely no income or no earnings, especially if it's uh, in, a, in, a, at, in the point in, in its life cycle, a company's in its life cycle where it should be throwing off some earnings like Apple or, or Microsoft or Ford or any of those companies. And so when you have a higher and higher and higher price to earnings ratio, that's way more dangerous in my point, in my opinion, than having just a high stock price. Hmm. It becomes um, a perception, you know, the, the value of a stock becomes perceptional or with uh, more than it does reflecting the reality of the value of the stock. And that's been going on for as long as I can remember. I remember when it hit 10,000 and everybody thought the world was going to end. Mm. People were talking about watching it hit 1,000 oh. in the 80s, I think in the 70s, when we were really young kids. Wow. And they thought that then the world and all kinds of stuff happened after that. We went off the gold standard, all kinds of crazy stuff. Hmm. So I don't think this is a good thing, but everybody seems to be really happy about it. I don't know if it's just clickbait or what. Hmm. Probably some of that. You've been watching Jack and Jill on Money Matters. <laughs> You've been hopefully taking my big point picture point is here. Jeez, how do you, if you have control over how much you, money you buy a piece of real estate for, buy a piece of dirt, and it's way less than you're going to turn around and sell it for two weeks later, where's the risk in that? I know. That's the thing. I, this is why I hate the stock market. That's I have it. no control. I hate it. This is why I hate. I mean, I'm trying to think of so many other things. Well, I won't do a term or I won't do a like a. What am I trying to say? A wholesale deal. Those of you who know know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not going to take it into contract. Try to go sell it. Trust my buyer's still going to or my seller's still going to be there. Trust it's all going to go okay. Trust the state will let me post the property for sale because I don't own it. I just have an equitable title. I'm not going to mess around with that. I'm going to buy the dumb thing. We're here to reduce risk. Yeah. And reduce variables. Right. Just like on a motor in a motorcycle seat. Yeah. You don't want to go into a turn all risky. And with a ton of variables where you're doing all kinds of stuff instead of just like trusting your soul and utilizing the years and decades of experience that you have, that's what you want. Totally. So I, I do not know of any way to improve guessing at what stocks and what indexes to buy uh, the way that we do now, the yeah. way that we do here. Join us next Wednesday for another interesting episode. You're not alone in your real estate ambition. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 